Right now, though, with the eastern half of the country either in a deep freeze or buried in snow or both, we thought it would be a good time to look at how weather affects those things we fly on. Or more to the point, how the National Research Council of Canada makes sure we're safe when it comes to flying. Snow, sleet, rain. All seasonal mainstays of the Great White North. It might look like a space station on an icy planet, but it's here at the NRC Aerospace Wind Tunnel that they're finding new and improved ways to make sure rough weather and air travel play nice together. I've been working on tests in this wind tunnel for the last five years. For the last four years, we've actually been working with Transport Canada and the Federal Aviation Administration, doing very similar tests in terms of looking at the effects of fluids and snow and ice pellets. With this wind tunnel, we're at the mercy of Mother Nature, so whatever temperature it is outside in Ottawa, it's the temperature inside as well in the test section. So we just have to wait for the right temperatures. Catherine and a team of aviation experts are studying how anti-icing fluids affect flight performance. And they're pouring it on thick. The fluids, that is. APS has developed a, a hold over time application for iPads during the icing operations. The information right at their fingertips, and you type in the uh, fluid type, the type of precipitation, the temperature, and it provides you a running time of your hold over time. Pilots need that information so that they can determine the amount of protection time that they have before their wing will get iced up. Thickness on two is 80. So what Dave is taking is a film thickness at, at various locations across the cord, and he's also going to measure refractive index of the fluid. Bricks is 29. Refractive index, or bricks, is a measure of the freeze point of the fluid. This fluid here has probably a freeze point of minus 30 or minus 35. All right, so All right we're, we're ready to run. It's really a unique wind tunnel, and it's not available anywhere else in the world. And, and it allows us a flexibility and a chance to do these tests where we wouldn't have a chance otherwise. You have experience on that, What makes this facility unique? Not only can you test a full-size tail section at fully operational speeds, you get to douse it in liquids, in freezing conditions. So when the test is running, we're simulating an aircraft taking off down the runway. As you can see, we're accelerating. We're almost at 115 knots. When you're going down the runway, it's the wings that generate the lift, but the tail is what pushes the back down and the nose up and lets you take off. This test is about looking at the effects of anti-icing fluid on the performance of that tail. And we're looking to see at different speeds and with different fluids how those affect the performance of the model. So I can see where the fluid is pooling around the model, how it behaves on the bottom side. I saw a little more puddling up on that one. So far, we've gotten some surprising results. We thought we would get uh, better performance. Definitely a different uh, breed of test that we've been looking at this week. Anti-icing fluids disturb the airflow over a plane, reducing the lift generated by the wings. A pilot then has to pull back more on the stick during liftoff. In this case, the team had hoped the fluids would have less impact on the tail's performance. But new questions call for more research. We've been surprised by results. That's the, uh, the nature of testing. We changed one variable, and we thought it would make it better. And actually, it didn't make anything better. It kept it the same. So that's what we're doing here at Science. We don't know what the answers are going to be. That's why we're doing these tests. Over the next week, the team will continue to throw variations on fluids, wind speeds, and aircraft profiles into the mix, cataloging and analyzing information all in the name of getting you up in the air safely. All this work that we're doing right now, we're going to see it implemented in new regulations in the coming year. So it's nice to see the results of your work coming out right away and having an impact on the airlines and their operating environment, making flights safer.